Greetings folks, welcome to Bob of All Trades. In this video, I wanna talk about a few things that you can do to your laptop to make it run cooler should you be unable to undervolt your CPU or sometimes you still can undervolt your CPU and you're not getting any thermal improvement. Let's address the latter here first. If you can undervolt your Intel CPU and you're not seeing an improvement in temperatures, there is way too many reasons why this can be so. Oftentimes, the chassis, the fan curve, and the wattage is really going to dictate your ultimate thermal performance improvement when you undervolt. And rather than going into great detail and explaining how each one of these affects the system, just know that they do especially when it comes to maximum fans. If you do not have the ability to do that, then the system is oftentimes just going to scale its fan curve to the temperatures. So lowering the voltage of the CPU, ultimately trying to decrease the temperatures, typically just prolongs the amount of time it takes for the fan curve to reach its maximum at the end of the day, your temperatures are still super hot. So furthermore, Plundervolt, that was an update to the BIOS that will no longer allow you to undervolt your CPU as there was an exploit there. Now, if I were Intel, I would be looking at a fix for this so we can get this back. And this does not apply to all systems. It does not apply to every 10th generation Intel system. And I've had my hands on a few. And this one here happens to be one that I can't Undervolt. This is the 10th generation Intel i7, the 10750H 6 core CPU inside of this HP Omen. Now, thankfully, I don't really need to undervolt it as I'm getting pretty good thermal performance, and HP gives you enough options here in order to maintain great thermal performance, as a matter of fact. But we're not all that lucky to be able to have a system a tuned system from the factory that can achieve the thermal performance that we crave from our laptops. So here's a few things that you may want to try doing. Try downloading Throttle Stop. I have a tutorial covering this, two of them at least, on the channel. I will link those in the description below and at the end of the video. And within Throttle Stop, you may find that there's some undervolting sliders here and you may be able to move those all over the place and they just don't do anything. That is the case on this HP Omen. It is locked out of undervolting. Despite me being able to adjust them, there is no evidence of the adjustment taking effect using software such as Hardware Info 64. But you might be able to address the power limitations. You have PL1 and PL2. PL2 will be the high power limitation that usually lasts for around 28 seconds. Now in this HP machine, it's set to 107 watts. And since we are running the default performance, the PL1 will be down to 45 watts. You can adjust these on many laptops despite being locked out of undervolting. Now, while you do adjust these, it may not show its adjustment in real time within Hardware Info 64, but when you stress test your system using Cinebench, oftentimes you can reveal the wattage that the machine is pulling. And in this case, I set the PL2 to 45 watts, PL1 to 35 watts. PL1 will be the most important one. That will be the wattage that the system will pull at maximum at long term. So usually anything beyond 30 seconds. And then from there on out, that will be what the CPU pulls providing its under load. Now I'm not suggesting you use these power limitations, but I did choose these specifically for a reason as it can oftentimes be a safe bet and a good place for you to start. But don't come to this channel asking me what power limitations I recommend for Laptop X. You have to do that work on your own. There's thousands of machines. I can't test them all. My advice isn't to tell you what to set it as. My advice is to tell you to practice trial and error, learn this for yourself, is every machine will be different. However, there's more to the equation than just limiting the wattage, maybe disabling turbo or lowering the frequency. Now, I don't recommend the second and third one there as much as I recommend the power limitations as that's a very easy thing to adjust and then we can let the chip perform as it does. And if it's a gaming chip, 
strictly a gaming laptop per se, then that might be a really good solution for you. But by all means, if you want to disable turbo or lower the actual clock speed using throttle stop, have at it. You want to go down that rabbit hole, you're more than welcome to do so. However, what you can do is undervolt the GPU. And I have a tutorial, of course, on how to do that. Big surprise. Now, I know what you're thinking. Bob, I don't, I don't need to lower the temperature of my GPU. It runs fine. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't. It probably runs very cool. We've got a 2080 Super inside of this HP Omen, and I can keep it at around 70 degrees Celsius at 150 watts, no problem. You need to think outside the box a little bit here. Now take this beast of a cooling solution here. You've got your CPU and your GPU. And if the GPU is running nice and cool, then a lot of times people are not focused on doing anything about this to make it run even cooler. Understand this, there's still some excessive voltage that is going to the GPU, and if you peel off some of that voltage, it's gonna make this run cooler, but it's also gonna affect the thermals of your CPU because this is a shared heat pipe. This works almost all of the time. And I will have evidence of not only how to do the tutorial in which you're gonna to have to do some trial and error to make the adjustment specific to your machine, but also evidence on how undervolting the GPU does not affect frame rate performance but improves thermal performance across both the GPU and the CPU. Again, these are shared heat pipes. If we can peel off some of the temperature, some of the voltage off of the GPU, it's going to affect the CPU in a positive way. And we still have access to this. NVIDIA has no reason to lock this out. And this is going to be something that will be here for everyone with an NVIDIA GPU Pascal or newer, so the 10 series or newer, we can still do this. Now this can get a little tricky, all right? Isn't that cooling solution beautiful? This can get a little tricky and it's gonna take some patience, some trial and error, and some practice on your end to dial this in. We can take the same laptop and then give it a few months down the road and maybe there's an update to decrease the wattage on the CPU and now that affects everything or maybe they take the ability to max out the fans away from you. This has happened before, <clears throat> Lenovo. My point is, when I create these tutorials, they may seem a little generic, but that's because there is a wide range of machines pulling different wattages with different fan curves, different power limits, and that is gonna have a huge effect, huge impact on how any of this stuff works. And as a result, trial and error is key. So what are we talking about here? If you cannot undervolt your CPU, you may have good luck decreasing PL2 and PL1, lowering the wattage and therefore improving thermal performance. And you would be surprised at how little this could impact most games out there. Perhaps the titles that you enjoy playing, this works out great. There's a handful of you out there that may disagree and find themselves needing more CPU power. Undervolting that GPU usually helps improve thermal performance of the CPU because the heat pipes are shared. Links in the description below for guides to help assist you with everything that we've talked about here today. Best of luck to you, my friends. I'm Bob Valtrades, and I'll see you in the next video.